Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with panna cotta. That's right, buttermilk panna cotta to be exact. And if you're not familiar, this is basically the answer to the age-old question. What is the most beautiful, easiest, and best tasting summer dessert of all time? Plus, it is very fast to make. Well, except for the fact we got to let this chill overnight. But that little bit of time management aside, it's very quick to put together, as you're about to see. So let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we have to do something called Bloom the Gelatin, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to take our package of powdered, unflavored gelatin and sprinkle it over some cold water. And then we'll give it a little stir with our freakishly small metal spoon. And then all we need to do is let that sit there for about five or 10 minutes. And what's going to happen is that gelatin is going to absorb that water and it's going to kind of swell up and turn into what basically looks and feels like rubber. And we'll get a good look at that when we add it to our hot cream mixture. But for now, that's it. We'll just mix that up and set it aside while we move on to the remaining ingredients. So into a saucepan, we're going to go ahead and add our heavy cream. And sure, if you want, you can switch up the types of dairy using this. Some people go with milk or half and half or combinations with cream. That's up to you. You are the Jake LaMotta of this panna cotta. And speaking of Raging Bull, let me continue with my narration. And then to our cream, we will add a little touch of sugar. And then we'll go ahead and grab a whisk and give that a stir before heading to the stove where we're going to cook this up. So we will place that on medium heat. And all we need to do here is cook this, stirring occasionally, until it just barely starts to simmer. So despite the name panna cotta, meaning cooked cream in Italian, this mixture really doesn't cook much at all. And while we're waiting for that to come up to temperature, we can go ahead and toss in a little bit of lemon zest, if you want. Like most desserts, all the flavorings in here are optional. And then like I said, all we're going to do is cook this over medium, stirring once in a while, until it just starts to simmer. And basically this is what we're looking for right here. You'll see some small bubbles forming around the edge, and then eventually you'll see some bubbles breaking up through the surface here and there. And yes, this would have been a little easier had I focused the camera properly, but you get the idea. And as soon as that mixture just starts to simmer, what we'll do is take it off the heat and add the rest of the ingredients. So we will start with an incredibly tiny, tiny pinch of salt. Okay, completely optional, but I do like to put a very tiny pinch in. I mean tiny. That was like 10 crystals. I will also add a few drops of vanilla extract. Of course, the real and the pure. So we'll do a little touch of vanilla, followed by our now fully bloomed gelatin, which as I warned you, will turn into something that looks and feels like rubber. It's a little scary, but don't be afraid. And as soon as that bloomed gelatin hits that hot cream mixture, it's gonna dissolve pretty quickly. Or is it melt? You know what, it could be both. But regardless, keep whisking until that disappears completely. At which point we can go ahead and add our cold buttermilk, which in my opinion is gonna provide a very important tanginess to the flavor profile, as is the next and last ingredient, some fresh lemon juice. So we'll go ahead and add about a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and we will give that a final whisking, and that is gonna be it for our panna cotta base. And then what I like to do at this point is go ahead and strain this through a fine sieve, which of course will catch our lemon zest and or any lumps we have, which we didn't have any. And you almost never do, but we'll strain it anyway, ideally into some kind of container that's easy to pour from, because the next step is to fill some kind of appropriate containers. And what you use here depends on which of the two methods you're gonna to use to serve this. So my preferred method and the easiest way to serve this is just to let it set in some kind of cup. For example, these vintage Sunday glasses. At least I think they're vintage, because they got those little bead things around the bottom. That looks like some kind of design they would have done in the olden times. So the first method would just be to fill up some cups like this, and then the second method would be to fill up some ramekins, which we could then unmold and serve on a plate, which does look a little fancier, but is not quite as easy to serve as you're about to see. But anyway, regardless of how you're gonna serve this or what container you used, once those are filled, we're gonna go ahead and wrap those with plastic and chill them overnight before we serve them. And I say overnight so you're not tempted to eat these too soon. See, if you make them during the day, you'll never be able to wait those four or five hours it takes to get them cool enough. So do not tempt yourself. Chilling these overnight is my recommended procedure. But either way, once those are chilled thoroughly, we can unwrap them and enjoy what is nothing short of an amazing dessert. And let me go in for a close-up here so you can see that amazingly shiny, perfect surface. Just so beautifully unblemished. And then as far as the garnish goes, fresh fruit is very traditional. Either pureed into a sauce or whole like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and garnish with some fresh raspberries. And I'll finish up with a little sprig of mint which is gonna look pretty and annoy some of my food blogger friends. And that's it, our panna cotta is done and ready to tear into. And you have to admit, for the amount of effort we put into this, that is an impressive looking dessert. And certainly not just impressive looking. 
This should also be incredibly impressive feeling and tasting. For me, the whole key to this is to use just enough gelatin to hold it together without it becoming rubbery. So as you can see, we're getting beautiful sharp lines as we go into this with our spoon. But on the palate, there is no rubberiness at all. It is very smooth, very luxurious. And then as far as the taste goes, I think you're gonna be very pleased. Just very light, very refreshing, with a beautiful little tanginess in the background from the lemon and buttermilk. So I really do love everything about this. Okay, so that was the easy way to serve these. Now let me show you the harder way. If we wanna unmold these and serve them on a plate, what we'll wanna do is give these a little dip in hot water, as well as probably go around with a knife. And then what we'll do is kind of turn it over and shake it a little bit, and it will come right out super easily. Here we go. Come on. All right, here we go. Getting close. And no. See, the problem here is suction. So what you end up having to do is kind of stick the knife in again like this, and hopefully break that seal, and then continue with the old shake a shake -a. And eventually it should come out, and that really isn't too bad. But as you can see from our manhandling, there are a few divots here and there. So to distract our guests, we'll go ahead and garnish this with a little fresh fruit, as well as again, the obligatory and possibly gratuitous mint sprig. And then to provide further camouflage, we'll go ahead and drizzle over a little bit of honey. And not only is honey a traditional garnish for panna cotta, as you can see, it also does a pretty good job of hiding those flaws. So anyway, that would be your second and more challenging way to serve it. So it is a little trickier to serve this way, but if you can pull it off, it does look kind of impressive. But anyway, that's it, buttermilk panna cotta, or panna cotta, as I usually pronounce it in real life. Whether you serve it in a cup or on a plate, you're gonna be enjoying one of the most beautiful, easiest, and most delicious desserts of all time. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.